Hi, 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 hi. This is Eva from Bayar Bomet Spa, Miami and Atlanta. And this is a video that I'm dedicating to all the black nurses, all the black nurses in Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, the Carolinas. Why black nurses in particular? So I'll tell you why black nurses in particular. It seems to be the largest percentage of my patients and my clients are black nurses. And after having over the years conversations with black nurses, so in Florida and so in, uh, in uh, Georgia, in Nuna and in Atlanta, um, it is so very clear to me that even though nurses do work in the medical field, but something that I always said, oh, this is Ernie, by the way, guys, this is Ernie. Um, I always said that, and nurses say this back to me, they said, look, there is nobody, no doctors that can uh, treat black skin and can't even give recommendations. Yesterday, I had two nurses that came here, I'm in Georgia, and the nurse said to me several years ago, one of the doctors in the hospital that she works recommended her to go for laser hair removal because she has uh, facial hair. He knew nothing about the fact that you cannot use regular lasers on black skin, that you need to use a special laser. He just said that to a laser place. She went to a laser place, they burned her. They knew nothing about uh, Yag laser. They knew nothing about the fact that uh, you cannot do what you do in white skin to do the same thing in black skin. So I, I sort of thought that I want to address this and I want to share this with all the nurses all over. Majority of uh, black nurses suffer, particularly in the South, suffer from unwanted facial hair. Majority of black nurses have are overweight and suffer from PCOS, suffer from endometriosis, suffer from hormonal imbalance. And there is nobody, absolutely nobody, even though they work in hospitals, even though they work with doctors, there is nobody that can recommend, that can address their issues. But I will tell you why. Because in reality, when you go to medical school, there is absolutely zero curriculum. Whether you go to nursing school or whether you go to uh, medical school, there's absolutely zero curriculum when it comes to black skin. Everything is treated one as the same. So there is no knowledge no, by no medical uh, professionals, whether it's doctors, nurses, nurse practitioners, whoever it is, there is no knowledge about black skin and what black skin, uh, what black skin uh, requires. And black nurses are overworked, over, absolutely overworked, are stressed out, have many, many uh, uh, long hours, eat very badly, have no directions of where to go, what to do, what blood work to take, what hormonal tests to take, how to take care of themselves. Majority of black nurses that I see have a full-blown beard. Majority of nurses have ingrown hairs. Majority of nurses pluck or twist their hairs and they are sick and tired. And I can tell you that I have people who are flying to Atlanta to come to see me because they realized after years of suffering and then years of watching me on YouTube that I am the number one black skin expert in the United States that I really know what I am saying. And ladies and gentlemen, I do this over 40 years. Before I came to the United States, I treated African black skin. So not brown skin, but black skin, because African Ethiopian skin is black, it's not brown. American black skin is brown. So I really treated very, very dark skin. I have tremendous amount of expertise and experience, but I want to share something else with you to give you a comparison. Can anybody tell me how many semesters at medical school do doctors get trained on vitamins and minerals? 
zero, zero, zero. The same way, the same way they don't treat, they, they don't train people in black skin and they don't train people in the vitamins and supplements. It's a gap. And so generally, if you go to a doctor, they do not know really to tell you about vitamins and they do not know uh, to give you information about black skin. Now, that changes when you go to Europe. Because Europe, it's the opposite. Alternative and conventional uh, medicine goes hand in hand. In Germany, for instance, a lot of vitamins have to be given by prescription. You can just not walk into a, a health food store and buy vitamins. So, so you, and I come from Europe, you know, my training is very, very different. So I have tremendous respect for a lot of, uh, uh, a, a lot of different ways to approach uh, the well-being of, of, of the human body, the well-being of, of people. I have a different approach because I was uh, trained differently. I learned differently. I have a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience. So I am sharing this with all the black nurses. And I ask kindly of you guys, if you are a black nurse and you see this video, Share this with you, uh, with your friends. Talk to other nurses. I know that a lot of nurses, and this generally, women are embarrassed. They come to me and they say, Eva, you know, I have a colleague at work. She really is so bad. She suffers so badly. And, uh, for years, and her skin is 10 shades darker because she's plucking and she is shredding and she's waxing and it's horrible. So, here is what I'm, and I said, so why don't you tell her that you come? And she said, I don't know how to approach her. Well, I'll tell you how you approach your colleague as a human being, as a friend. And you say, listen, I see that you have the same problem that I have, or I see that you have the same problem as my sister has, or as my cousin has, or as my mother has. And I know there is somebody that treats our skin. There is somebody that treats black skin, that understands black skin, that has the knowledge in black skin. Why don't you call her? Why don't you go and watch her videos? Just something, don't push. Just give them the option to find out that there is a solution. That, that, that's number one. That's how I would go about it. Guys, I many often I go to the supermarket, I go to the post office, I go wherever I go, I get to see women, white women, black women that suffer from endometriosis or PCOS. I can I can tell immediately just by looking at the shape of the body, and they have a full face, full beard of hair. So I approach people as a human being. I said, listen. I want to talk to you on the side for a minute. And I tell them, I have a daughter that suffered from this for over 30 years. So I approach them with humanity, which I am. And I share the story and I say, by the way, I do this. I treat human skin, I treat uh, hormone I treat PCOS, I treat endometriosis, uh, clients and patients that suffer from this condition. And I approach people. I don't do it because I want to become a multimillionaire. I do it because I know de facto I'm a woman. No woman wants to run around with facial hair and look like a man. I judge by myself. If I am one hair here or two hairs here, I will do everything to take this hair away so I don't see it. So I only have one or two hairs. So can you imagine how it feels for a woman that is full of hair. So this is something that I need you guys to know and to understand. There is no shame. It's just if you approach somebody that already suffers, at the end of the day, they will be very thankful to you. So you help somebody else. If you don't say anything, you're complacent. You're hurting that person because you know better, because you know that there is another way, that you know that this woman could change her life. So don't be complacent. Don't uh, push it to the side. Because if you put yourself in the shoes of, of that person, if you were that person, and somebody would approach and say, 
there is something that can be done that can help you, I am sure of it. Uh, how would you feel? You And then you would follow up. You would feel very happy and very thankful that that person changed your life forever. And when you think like, what do you mean never change your life forever? Okay, what woman wants to go to bed or kiss a man or have a boyfriend would allow him to touch her face when she has a beard and when she shaves it and when she has a five o'clock shadow from in the morning shaving at two o'clock? What woman? What woman would want to be embarrassed by a guy that would kiss her, then he would feel her face. He would say, what, what do you have? What's going on? Uh, what woman would take off makeup to, to show to a guy that she has all of uh, discoloration and bumps on her face? Do you know that I have clients that came to me that would go to sleep with makeup just so their boyfriend wouldn't see how they look? And I changed their life, and I changed their life for the better. So what I am actually saying to you is, it is okay to talk about this. And it is okay if you know to share it. Now, I want to say something else. Because, you know, I speak about a lot of subjects just from experience. So I want to tell you something else. Yesterday, I encountered a nurse that came to see me from uh, Columbus. And we talk, talked on the phone, she found me on YouTube, and we talked on the phone whereas I was in Miami, and then we made an appointment. So then she arrived, and she shaved all her hair. But she told me on the phone that she has white hairs. And I explained to her that for white hairs, I cannot treat with laser. There's no laser in the world that can treat white hairs. You need to do electrolysis. So I said, well, why did you shave? Like, you're driving to see me for 45 minutes, and you come, I can't touch you. I, there's no way I can treat your hair, because there's no hair. And for electrolysis, contrary to, and I will explain this to contrary to laser, so for laser hair remover, you cannot have any hair sticking out from your skin. The hair has to be completely removed before you do treatments. So we shave it before you do laser hair removal treatments. Why? Because the laser beam that comes out of the machine is calibrated. You know, the laser beam has a particular length which is less than half a centimeter long. And that's exactly the length, the depth, that the, the laser beam goes under the skin and hits the hair follicle. And if the hair follicle is in the growing stage, it will destroy it. It will destroy the blood vessels that supply the food, oxygen, and hormones. And that hair follicle, it cauterizes it in a way, and the hair follicle will die. For electrolysis, it's exactly the opposite. So laser can treat dark hair or black hair. Laser cannot treat white hair because white is not color. Laser cannot treat blonde hair because that's not a color. Because laser is attracted, young laser is attracted to the pigment of the hair, not the hair itself, to the color that is in the hair. So for electrolysis, for white hair, you can do only electrolysis. Now, what is electrolysis? Electrolysis is a process where you insert a needle into the hair follicle. Then I press on a foot pedal, I release heat through that needle, and that needle cauterizes the hair if the hair is in the growing stage. Then I take the needle out, and then I take a tweezer and I take the hair out. If you shave, there's nothing to take out. I can't do anything because I can't take the hair out. So you have to leave the hair. But here is now the issue. So the lady explained it to me. She said, you know, I had to shave because I had to go yesterday. On the day before she came to see me, I had to go somewhere in the evening and I couldn't go with your face. It was the face of full of white hairs. So I explained to her what the process was, what it would entail. And any woman, any nurse that has black and white hair, or white or black hair, just listen carefully to what I'm telling you right now. Here is what needs to happen. I can treat you, unfortunately, you are coming a, a bit late because as soon as you have white hairs, 
uh, the process is not going to be easy and the process is going to be tedious and complicated and painful, but you have no choice. So here's what happens. If you are a woman that has 60% white hair and 40% black hair, then I would do the following. I would say, okay, we are going to treat the 40% of your hairs with laser and we are going to treat the 60% of your white hairs with electrolysis. Now, what is a woman to do, a nurse that works, what is she to do if indeed, if indeed she's working, how can she walk around with facial hair? That's very difficult. So I said here, you come to see me once every five weeks. So for four weeks, you can shave all your hair, your white hair and your black hair. And then one week before you come to see me, or five days before you come to see me, you don't touch your face, you don't shave. You leave your black and white hairs intact. You wear a face mask. Remember during COVID, we all wore face masks, and for a lot of women, we say it was a very comfortable solution. Well, this will be the same solution applied to you if you have hair and for five days you cannot shave and it's visible after, you know, after one day or two days, you put on a face mask and you, you, you wait until you come to see me. So five days, four days before you come to see me, you have to know how fast your hair grows. You stop shaving. And for, for those four days, you wear a face mask. So nobody at work sees your hair. Then you come to see me. Then the process is as following. I first treat the white hairs. I remove all the white hairs that you have with electrolysis, which might take an hour. Then all the black hairs that are left there, I shave those, because remember what we said earlier, I cannot do, I cannot do, a, I cannot do laser with hairs being out. So I shave all the hairs. And then I do laser. Laser takes three minutes. Electrolysis takes an hour. A laser from one to 10, discomfort and pain, is a two or three. Electrolysis, a discomfort from one to 10 is a 10. It hurts, it hurts. However, you have no choice. Because if you waited this long, darling, you have no choice but to do electrolysis. Because the longer you wait, the more you pluck, the more you wax, your skin gets wounded, your skin gets more dark, your skin gets discolored, you get inflammation, you get discoloration, you get ingrown hairs, you get bumps, you get abscesses, and that's in the good case. In the bad case, you get HS, which is Hydradanti superativa. You get HS and you are, I don't want to be vulgar, but to tell you what you, what, where you are, what happens to you physically when you get HS. HS is one of the most debilitating diseases on planet Earth when it comes to human skin. Black people proportionately seem to be suffering much more than white people and Hispanic people from HS. Why? I'll tell you why. Because black people have coarse curly hair. And what happens is when the hair cannot break through the skin, it curls up and goes back under the skin. But remember this, every human hair that comes out passes under the skin by an oil gland. That oil gland moisturizes and releases oil onto the hair, which is a normal process, otherwise your hair would break. So it gives it, it its oil, its moisture. But here's what happens. When the hair comes out, that oil, that oil will oxidize, that oil will evaporate in the air because it came in contact with oxygen. So nothing will happen. But if that oil sits on the hair and the hair curls up and goes back under the skin, now you have a perfect situation for an infection, inflammation, and an abscess. 
And when that happens, very often this develops into HS, Hidradanti Suprativa. And this is a debilitating disease because it is so very painful. It is so very unsightly. It is so very embarrassing. It smells so very badly. Every pimple, every hair has a bump. Every hair is full of pus that really smells horribly and full of blood. And black women and black men get it on their groin, get it on their tush, get it on their uh, pubis, get it under their breast, get it on the belly folds, get it on the pubis, get it on their underarms, sometimes get it on the face. Many places that you have even more fat, you get more HS and folds in the skin. And ladies and gentlemen, if you don't believe me that HS is such a painful condition, go and Google HS photographs. And Google who suffers the most from HS and why black people suffer the most from HS. I just gave you the answer. When you suffer from HS, there are several stages. If you are at the beginning of the stages, that you have abscesses, but the abscesses did not yet create tunnels from here to here, from here to here. Because these tunnels create like braids underneath and they connect. So you have an ingrown hair, and then it's an ingrown hair, and it's sort of like grow, they are like tunnels that are growing across from one point to the other one under the skin. That part is so painful, that part is uh, inflamed, it creates a very bad odor, creates pus in the skin, creates keloids, creates wounds, creates discoloration. And when this happens, it is so painful. Many women that suffer from it cannot sit. Many women cannot walk. Many women cannot even touch around their vagina or the pubis or the, under their armpits or the belly, you don't understand how painful and how debilitating this is. And it oozes and it embarrasses people. A lot of women have to put like package of gauze everywhere where there it bleeds and oozes. It's just a debilitating condition. And when that stage is already there, the only solution is surgical excisions. You go to the doctor, they have to cut in, cut from here to here, wherever it started, wherever it ends, they have to take the whole thing out. That's, it, first of all, it's painful. It leaves 10 million scars because you have so many and they all have to come out surgically because if they don't come, they can swell up to this side. It can be just so horrendous. Sometimes you can, you can lose uh, uh, the use of your arm. You can lose your, your, your muscle. You can uh, use ligaments because it, Everything is so inflamed and so swollen. So very often doctors will then do excisions, surgeons, and take it out. Now what happens to black women? Most of black women when you do surgical procedures, most black people tend to kill it. Why? Because black skin has more collagen than white skin. <laughs> Oh, baby, what? So when, so when black skin... Shh, sorry. Shh, when black skin gets this in this situation, uh, it is absolutely, absolutely uh, horrendous. And there is, there is very little that I can, that I can do. But you can do something about it. You can do laser hair removal before it gets to that bad stage. And I am saying to every black woman, do not wait. When you have your first ingrown hair, whether it's on your bikini, on your pubis, on your under, wherever it is, don't buy a handbag, don't buy shoes, don't, don't spend your money on anything. Spend your money on young laser hair removal. Get rid of this before it gets to the stage that there is no going backwards, there is no, re there is no return. 
When I said black skin has more collagen, black skin is thick, has more collagen. It's the collagen that creates. Okay, it's all right. It's the collagen that creates a uh, keloids because this accumulation and stimulation you cut and then you stimulate more collagen production and that's what creates the keloids. So, ladies and gentlemen, I have to go and attend to him. I will finish now. If you have any questions or if you think that I make sense, do two things. Share this information with your other friends. Don't be stingy. That's number one. Number two, if you if you know somebody or if you yourself are in this position and you can come to Georgia to the Nuna location or Miami Beach, give me a call. 305-864-3333. Ciao.